So Jen, what's with all the hinkles? <laughs> this is yet another hinkle, and this one is going to a different place. Um, this is one of three that I got from Sam Clymer down in Texas. It seems like because everybody's like, oh, I'm, you know, you can't get them, you can't get them. They're crazy expensive, they're in demand, and that's because you can't get them. But it seems like when they do surface, boy, they surface all at once. It was wild um, and a flurry of um, about six to eight weeks is what I was doing these at as far as turnaround time. So you can see the stencil on this one. Obviously this is going to be a crappy pattern. Um, I've got two different size crappy stencils from um, st uh, Anarchy Stencil, Anarchy Model Stencil UK. It's, it's a mouthful, but Anarchy, let's just say that. It's from Anarchy from Brian Best over in Great Britain in England so right now all I'm doing is kind of lightly adding in some crappy markings to this and we're just again you always hear me talk about depth you notice what I just did there though I just put a little bit of stenciling into the inside part of this bait because as this bait moves back and forth in the water um, it's going to be moving and if you leave that middle section completely blank it doesn't look like anything else on the fish that you're doing so that's why i do that i always try to do that where i have the ability to on all of my all of my swim baits or jointed let's say not necessarily even have to be a swim bait it can be a regular joint and crank bait i always try to move the colorway into the center part and rats are different. I usually do like a dark red or like a bloody type, like what you would see if the middle section were open. So always try to give a little bit of extra spice to whatever I'm painting. Um, but this is just going over and adding in different layers. And now I've come back doing the same stencil, but I'm adding crisper outer line so the the first run was very muted very light spray the second pass with this stencil is a little bit darker uh, using a little bit more pressure on the trigger and making the lines a little bit more crisp and that also will add some depth to whatever it is you're doing especially if you're using stencils when you layer stencils that makes a big difference in the dynamics of your bait or anything you're doing even if it's just on a wall it is, uh, it's a Saturday morning and I'm getting ready to go in and uh, hustle some, some baits again to the shop. But before I did, I wanted to finish up this video. I was hoping to get this out last week um, after I shipped these baits to the customer, to Sam. Um, unfortunately, I have not been able to, to acquire enough time to, <laughs> I guess that's a good way to put it, to uh, have any kind of downtime the last couple weeks. So this is a Liquitex Gold, and there's not a whole lot of gold on crappie, but just a hint to give a little bit of that mica flash to it is not a bad idea. Some it, Northeast crappie, you're going to see it. Down in the south, um, southeast, southwest, Texas for sure, the crappie are so much more washed out and faded out. Um, a lot of times you'll have dingier, more stained water. I don't want to say dingy. It just stained is the proper, I guess, terminology for it. And now we've got my favorite, one of two favorites, moss green. And I'm not going to add much of that into this. Um, Sam wanted a very light, 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 light color to represent what these crappy look like in Texas. So if you guys are interested in having me do one of your customs, not, not necessarily Hinkle, it could be anything, uh, let me know where you live. That's important because you're not necessarily going to be fishing water unless you're a tournament angler outside of maybe a two or three hundred mile radius. So generally you're going to have a particular look that you want on your colorways. And I do picture matching and all that kind of stuff too. 
when I have time. Now, as we go into show season, it's going to get a little bit crazier for me. So my lead time is going to go way up. And I was saying something on a post um, the other day where it's not the answer you guys want, but it's the truth. Because if I promise you something in a four-week turnaround and it takes two months or three months, or sometimes it's even taken up to six months depending on how slammed I get. And that's not a slight to you guys. I'm not trying to, oh, she, you know, she places this at a higher value than my order. That's not true at all. But I do come into all of these things with you guys with the understanding that I do have contract obligations to a couple, three or four different entities. Um, some are private, some obviously bullshad, and then um, if I have any work through any of our collaborative partners, I have to take precedence. So I always am very transparent in telling you guys that. Uh, it's not that I don't want to do your bait, and a lot of times if it's just one piece, I can work it in. But a lot of times what will happen is I'll give you guys a, let's say, a six to eight week turnaround, and we hit the sixth week, and you guys are like, hey, um, is my bait ready? And I'll, I'm always going to answer you, and I'll give you the best updates that I can. But a lot of times folks will go from, yeah, no, no worries, no rush, to where's my bait? <laughs> so just kind of giving you a, a little insight. But yeah, I definitely take, because I get asked that all the time. Um, you guys, we know you work for Bullshad, but do you do others? Sure I do. Absolutely. Um, it's going to get longer. Like the lead time usually rolls back to like three or four months. And if that's not a big issue to you, then that's cool. So do you see what's happening here in this color? So this is a shifter, but it's a really interesting, really light shifter. So when you look at this straight on... Well, that's the next one. But if you'd looked at that, it is like a gold and a really cool, like an icy blue. And I put just a little bit of that on there. So now we have my latest fave, that Starship White Pearl. And we're going to add that in to all over. And you can see that I'm doing this in bands that really that'll separate the uh, the fade lines pretty well and then I'm coming back up into the fade lines and I'm really washing that out a lot of times when I take photographs of things it looks a little bit darker in the picture than it actually is in real life and when you get it and plus if I'm using color shift it's gonna look straight on like this you're gonna see the coloring but when you hold that down at an angle or when it's moving through the water, that's gone. So this is another Vallejo, like a purplish green shift. And I just want a hint of that in a couple of spots. And again, this is a mica shift. So at certain angles that disappears, which is kind of neat. But I want just a little bit of coloration right by the tail and where that peck fin's going to be placed in. And we've got my bright gold green and brown. And I say green because it says brown on there, but it's got a green reflection to it. And you'll notice the only black that I placed on at all that I'm burying in this pattern were the crappy markings. little bit more black I'm gonna to put to this yep to this external layer I'm gonna put just a little bit of external detail in the lines and I'm going over where those lines were you can see that there's just a few bands up by the head and I'm gonna do that on both sides of this just barely noticeable as a band so I'm, I'm trying to get this as natural looking as possible. So you can see what I'm doing there. Now on this bait to begin with, I did not add any black. I didn't use a black base because he wanted this really washed out. So I didn't want to make it too dark. And if I would have put in that extra depth with black, that would have been, I think, way too dark for him. 
He prefers, like, the more washed out baits he can get, he prefers that. And that's what, that's where his confidence zone is. So you certainly want to give them the best product that you can. I hope you guys are doing well this morning. Uh, it's, well, it's morning for me. It might not be where you guys are at. Wherever you are in the country or in the world, on the planet, good morning, buenos dias. Bonjour. Now this is a mix. I've got two yellows here. I know that says the bright gold uh, brown, but it really is not. Um, I think I'm even talking to somebody here in the back. But I'm using just a hint of a really light powder, almost pastel yellow that I've blended together and put into one of these Vallejo cups. I think I'm talking to Tristan in the background. Yeah, I'm talking about something. Who knows what? Could have been anything. So, we're just about finished with this pattern. Um, and then I add one more little quick dose of white pearl into this. I've been doing pretty good. Yeah. See if there's anything worth listening to here. There we go. See, there's always value to this. <laughs> yeah, Tristan was talking about he's going to Savannah. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, icy cold margarita sounded delicious. Anyways, I think we are, I think I'm, yeah, I'm rolling out the cup here. Now I've finished up with the powder yellow. I'm going to finish it with just a tiny, tiny bit of gold. Just in the gill plate there, over top of that powder yellow. On the butt. Same place as on the other side. Now, you see a whole lot of reflection that I wasn't even aware you could see in the camera. So, in my studio, I've got this neon pink hustle sign, which is sort of like my mantra. Mantra? Mantra? Anyways, it's kind of, yeah, my motto. Uh, because if you don't hustle every single, single, single day, um, you become irrelevant in today's time. So, you just have to do that in whatever way you can. I always joke that I'm pretty shallow on Facebook and Instagram. It's business only. Um, generally, if it's not work related or something that I'm pretty passionate about, I, I generally don't talk about it on Facebook. I'm, I'm not a politician that talks about my views and opinions. If you want to have a conversation with me outside of fishing, um, unless, you know, good friends, obviously, I talk to all the time, but I'm more than willing to talk to everybody about everything, but I'm not going to do it on Facebook. I would rather have a cup of coffee with you guys or sit down and have a beer and we talk about stuff because that's how I was raised. You know, you shake somebody's hand and you look them in the eye and you mean what you say. That's just who I am. So I, I have only had the uh, displeasure of having to remove a couple people from my page because they just were relentless and sorry that's just that doesn't carry any value with me um, I want to know what you're thinking but I don't I would rather know it in person so that's one of the reasons that I love going to shows and seeing you guys we get a chance to shake each other's hand or give a hug and say hey and what's up and all that good stuff now, it looks like my camera lighting just changed. Again, I've been having some issues. I love the uh, the lenses and the abilities with the iPhone 15 Max. It's still a big favorite of mine. I'm just not happy with the transition between the, the two lenses that I use on this one. So, look at that eye. It's so pretty. So, these eyes are really inexpensive. I'm going to find a link and drop, but I keep saying I'm going to drop all these links, and then I go back and I'm like, oh, I forgot to do that. So I think on the last one I was going to drop a link for the pink mica on the uh, on the last spray session. So I am going to do that. 
I'll go back and so keep checking back with the videos. I'm going to go back and re-edit those uh, those descriptions for you guys and make sure that we get something in for you because it is important. You guys got to, especially in today's economy, you got to save every penny you can. Um, and if you can find something that's in the inexpensive that works for you, that I can find an option for you guys, I'm certainly going to help you guys do that. So I hope you're having a good day. This is the faded crappie. Last step. Kind of fun. Now this is what kind of puts the white back in this. Taking a dry brush and some opaque white. The detail white for Wicked is opaque. Pouring a little bit out on the bench there that you can see. And then I'm dipping the brush in it. But I'm also going to dip that and brush it to where it's just about dry. And this is just a neat little, especially when you have something like a hinkle or a bullshad. Although, to be honest, sorry Mike, it works better on a hinkle <laughs> because he actually has carved scales into. And you see how light that is? It's just a dry brush technique. And I've done it on a couple of things over the years. Um, I'm certainly not the first to do this technique, but it's a pretty known in not just the fishing industry, but in the art world. So it's not, again, there's nothing proprietary that I'm giving away. Um, so all, all I'm doing here is I'm taking just a very light stroke with some opaque white and I'm tipping these scales. The scales on the fish are going to have a little bit of a white edge. And that's also going to mute this color down. So just a little little something special that you can do, especially if you have a customer that really, really, really wants a faded out look. And all this does is just mute the rest of it down as you go over it. So I hope that I have been able to give you guys some insight on this one. I think... I've done a fairly decent job. I really, before, I've, I've painted a few here and there over the years, but I never really thought about things the way I do now, I guess, when it comes to, like, spraying, and I, I would attribute most of that to my time with Mike here at Bullshad, because most of his baits, even the glides, there, there's some sort of scaling on them. He doesn't have a smooth bait. I keep asking him to do one because it would be a painter's dream for an actual smooth bait but it's just not his thing so it is what it is it's fine um, but it's given me a whole new way to perceive how to do baits especially like these hinkles because you have to work with scales you know you can't get a tight wrap on stuff um, they are somewhat difficult to really drill down and find creative solutions to make patterns look good but you can do it um, and I think that Hinkles are beautiful with all of the detail that he's put into his baits. Just like Mike's, you know, the one thing that's a treasure about the Bullshad line is that Mike has done everything by hand. He always, you know, jokes with me. He's like, I'm not an artist. He's like, I'm an engineer. He's like, my baits are going to function. That's the whole purpose. I want them to catch fish, not angles. And I admire that about him. So this is a closer up look at this, this beautiful hinkle for Sam Clymer. And I do have, I think I did his, um, his bluegill on a spray session as well. So look for that in the next few days. And then we're going to take a break from the hinkles and we're going to work towards uh, some of the other stuff that I've got going on in the shop. And I have enjoyed spending some time with you guys this morning. Thank you so much. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.